literally never been easier to create real-time uh, AI conversational assistance. So watch this. Hey, how can I help you today? Hey, uh, what's the best seller? Our most popular cut is the prime ribeye. It's a 28-day aged prime ribeye served with garlic butter. Would you like to know anything else about it? No. Uh, is this a good spot to take my girl on a date? Absolutely. Okay. Can I book a reservation for tomorrow? Yes, we can do that. What time were you thinking? Uh, probably 7 o'clock. Okay, and what name should I put the reservation under? Put it under Kale. Okay, and what's the phone number you'd like to use for this reservation? Uh, 905-758-1821. You're all set. I've sent a confirmation to 905-758-1821. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a great time. <laughs> Thanks. So just like that, and this took me probably four minutes to set up. So uh, yeah, let, let's go through how to, how to do it. The reason this is so easy to set up and only took me like two minutes is because Eleven Labs, the company behind um, all of the voices that you usually hear all these assistants using, um, made it super easy to create agents, right? So I'll, we'll walk through exactly how, how I built this. Now, there's Eleven Labs, OpenAI also does this, Vapi also does this very well. Um, you know, which, which one you go with kind of depends on what you're trying to do, but 11 labs is probably the easiest to set up for, for most people. So when you come in, you'll create an agent. So you could choose one or a blank template. So I chose a blank template and then it comes up like this, right? So the first thing is just choosing the language. That's pretty straightforward. Um, first message, Hey, how can I help you? Um, how can I help you today? System prompt. So you have to play around with this, right? It depends exactly kind of what you're trying to do. If you're a customer service bot, obviously you would explain all of that stuff in here. Um, I built a lot of agents and you know, the common practice is kind of define it, tell it who it is and what its job is, and then explain it, you know, give more context about what it's actually doing. Right? So this is chat embedded on a site. So it knows where it is and it has contact context about all of that stuff. Right? So you'll, you'll have to play around with this, but it's pretty easy to write up something that, that works well. Um, LLM, when you're working with conversational stuff, you probably want the fastest responses, right? So Flash is good for this. If you need really quality, then you drop it down to Sonnet or GPT-40. But um, again, speed is usually the, the thing you really want to get right in this. Temperature, you don't have to touch. You don't have to touch any of this. So knowledge base. So. The thing about AI agents is they're only as good as the context that you give it, right? So, uh, for example, I have a customer service thing that automates like a hundred thousand emails for Shopify brands a month. And a bunch of people tried to come into the space and compete, but they just thought that you come in and prompt the AI and you know, that's it. But that's like the very tip of the iceberg. And that's because it's only valuable if it can actually do stuff, right? Like if somebody's reaching out for the most part is because let's say they want a refund that they can't just go do on their own with the website. They have to reach out, right? So your AI, when you build this, has to be able to do refunds and cancellations and returns and tracking. And it needs to be able to do tracking to then figure out if they're eligible for a return or for a refund, right? And you need to build all of this logic in. So when you build these things, this knowledge base, I defeated this document with like information about the restaurant and the cuts and all of that stuff. But depending on what you're building, you have to put a lot of information in here and you have to kind of think ahead and think about all the cases that somebody could ask about, right? Because if it can't handle a bunch of stuff then it's no better than those really horrendous chat pods when you ask a question and it just says, oh, I'll just pass this off to somebody else, right? This enables you to do a lot more. So you should spend a lot of time here thinking about every case that could possibly come in. Now, Back to the customer service example, if somebody asks for a refund, then it needs to be able to actually call tools that can do the refund, right? So in this case, we saw when it sent this SMS, um, when it sent the SMS, it happened because I set up a tool right here. So if you don't know how to code, don't freak out. This is, it's not too difficult. Essentially what happens is I called something called a webhook, right? You could do this in Zapier or Make or any of these tools that make it super easy. I'm not going to go through that because it's straightforward, but 
that if you search that or ask ChatGPT about that, it will explain it perfectly for you. So you call a webhook and then in here, very simply, there's a thing called Twilio, which is where you connect a phone number. I just said, send a text just like this and then to the phone number. And then what happened was 11 labs called this. It sent the data, right? It sent my name, the phone number and the date and time. Um, and then it just texted it to me, right? So super simple. This is so powerful because now these AIs can do every, like basically anything that you give it the power to do, right? And all of this is quite easy to, uh, to set up now. So yeah, cool. Um, let's just save that. Okay. For the voice again, 11 labs is the best at this. You could choose a bunch of things. You can even choose Santa Claus if you want. Right. But, um, I just chose Roger. It is not so important to know every. So yeah, uh, text to speed. You probably don't need to touch any of this stuff. This stuff can make a huge difference, but if you're like cloning people's voice, for example, like if you're building something for maybe an influencer and the voice needs to sound exactly the same, then with 11 labs, you can literally duplicate somebody's voice and these settings become extremely powerful. Um, I'm not going to go into that, but if you do have to solve a problem for yourself like that, or for somebody else, you should play around with this stuff because it's, it, it can make a huge difference. So analysis, the thing about voice agents is like you could call it once and it could work fine. But like if a thousand people call it, is it going to work well for those a thousand people? Right? Because AI, if you send in the same thing, it will respond differently every single time. Um, and you need to be able to evaluate these things. So if you're building this for yourself and it's actually live and customers are dealing with it, you want to set up evaluations where you can make sure that it's actually doing its job properly. Cause a lot of the time people set up the agent and then just leave it. And then how do you know if it's making mistakes or not? Right? Like the way you will find out is customers leaving bad reviews or coming to you complaining. So this stuff's super powerful. Again, I'm not going to go into it, but it's just good to understand uh, what that does. Security, obviously definitely add security, but I just built this for a test. So, um, advanced, you probably don't need to touch any of this and then widget. So this is exactly how I put it on a little website, right? So if you code, you probably, you have a tag, you know, you just go to like index HTML, which is kind of like the main page. And I literally just pasted it in right like that. So it's fine. Boop. And that's it. Right. Um, if you have a website, so Webflow or Framer or any of these things, it will have a spot for you to put in a script and you literally just go there and just go boop and just paste it in. And that's literally it. And then it will show up in the bottom right hand corner of, uh, of your screen. And then people can come in and chat with it and Hey, how can I help? And that's it. It is super easy, right? Like it, you could get this all done in two minutes. If you, you know, actually had functionality and all that within an hour, you could have something very powerful that actually really helps your, uh, helps your customers. Okay. So now I want to build one live, but this time instead of having a, on a website, we're actually going to be able to call it right. And what we're going to build is like a Santa thing. So kids can call and talk to Santa and, you know, make, make all their, their dream come true. But Santa Claus call to do blank template, create agent. Okay. So if you go to this page, Twilio integration, 11 labs, the agents, you scroll through, it shows you the settings to set on your agent, right? So I did the Santa one and then, um, you literally just follow these steps and then pay attention. There's a dot env and then the index.js here. So I have the dot env index.js. You just copy and paste it super easy, right? Um, you copy all that code in, and then you start running the server. So you do Node.js, your server's running. And then what you do is use something called ngrok, which I'm running right here. In a terminal, you just do ngrok HTTP space 8080, which is the server that I'm running over here. Um, and then that essentially means it's live. It's not just local, it's actually live on a temporary thing. But um, so yeah, you do exactly as it shows there. And then you take that ngrok one and you go to here and then you just add the root at the end. So if you copy and paste this and the code, you can see it's right here. Um, so yeah, now this is running. All you have to do is call your number, right? So if we go, let's turn this volume up to, let's call, call 438-802. Zero four, 
Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas, my little friend. This is Santa Claus calling all the way from the North Pole. Oh, the elves have been working so hard in the workshop, and Mrs. Claus just made the yummiest batch of cookies. Can you smell the gingerbread? Mmm. The reindeer are getting ready for the big night, and I couldn't wait to hear from you. But before we get started, tell me, have you been practicing your best holiday cheer? Anyways, I'm not going to go through all that because it's burning money on my account. But, um, yeah, you if you integrate a chatbot on your website, super easy. It takes like three minutes. Even if you want something where you actually call it, which is a massive use case for most businesses, right, where people actually pick up the phone and call it and would still rather call and have it on a website, then it's super easy to set all this stuff up, right? You just copy and paste this base code, and then if you know how to code, just build on top of it or use something like Cursor um, or other AIs to, to help you build it. So yeah, there's how to build um, two super fast, easy, and very effective conversational uh, conversational AIs. So if you enjoyed this content, then subscribe because I'm dropping a bunch more. And if you have any questions, leave them uh, leave them down in the description. But yeah, all right, peace.